Welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living in Southeast Louisiana. I'm Reverend Larry Marie Howe, the spiritual director here, and I'm coming to you this week from Charleston, South Carolina, where I'm attending the Center for Spiritual Living Conference. We at our center are a group of radically inclusive spiritual renegades, healing hearts and creating community. And we embrace conscious spiritual living encouraging everyone to live in enthusiastic expectancy of their good and their abundance. And we're on a remarkable 2024 spiritual journey, continuing this week with our series on Michael Singer's book, The Untethered Soul, The Journey Beyond Yourself. And today we have our second of two talks on part two of the book, Experiencing Energy where Singer delves into transcending the tendency to close ourselves off from the infinite spiritual energy that's available to us. So stay with us as we explore the barriers that we erect that hinder our spiritual growth. Let's pray. Mm, we take a deep nourishing breath and we allow ourselves to Listen to the divine during this prayer time. We know that we are one with all that is. That God created us open and loving and kind. And what I know to be the truth is that each of us is here today by divine appointment. To hear something in the message, in the music, perhaps in a quote are any combination of those things and that we are here truly to embrace that infinite spiritual energy that's ours for the asking. And I know that through this service and through this connection that we have together today, that we are each learning a little bit more about how to connect more fully with that spiritual energy and how to release those energies that drain us. So I am grateful. I'm grateful that you decided to spend some time with us. And I am grateful for this community and for the opportunity I have to lead this community. It is truly a blessing on my heart. So it's with great gratitude that I release these words into the law of mind, spirit, and action, knowing that the divine has already said yes. So knowing that, I say amen, and we can affirm it together. And so it is. And since we're talking about breaking down barriers today, I thought this song might give us something to think about. Sing along with our music team as they sing, Walking in the Kingdom of Good. Right within you, all you want is searching. 
is our time for celebration and healing. Our time in our service where we celebrate life and we pray for people who desire prayer. We begin with celebration, so I invite you to say aloud so that the whole universe can hear it, any event in your life for which you're grateful and joyful this week. And now we turn to the healing portion of our service. We're a community steeped in healing. So we pause now to pray for anyone who's not feeling the joy of life that we perhaps were just feeling. They're not feeling maybe that they have things to celebrate. And I truly love this part of our service because it's so in alignment with who we are. So let's pray. God is all there is. God is that love and that peace and ease and grace and freedom and so much more. And as an individual expression of the divine, each of us have within us all of these qualities of spirit. They're available to us right here and right now. And what I know to be the truth is that there are people on this planet right now that aren't embracing those qualities. So we stop for a moment and we create a circle of love. And in this community, we place in that circle of love anyone that we recognize within ourselves or for someone else that might need prayer. So I'm gonna pause and I just invite you to say aloud the names of all of those people that you wanna include in our circle of love. I know that God is right where each of us happens to be, right here and right now, moving in through and as each of us. And I know that the divine has heard every name that we spoke, either in our hearts or aloud. And what I'd like you to do now is pause again, and from your heart to all of theirs, just send out love, knowing that the divine knows exactly how to distribute it. And what I know to be the truth is that anything that needs to be released within each of these people is being released now, be it disease of the mind, of the body, of the soul. I know that anything that's seeking to come forth and be lifted up can be lifted up. And that this release and this lifting up is healing whatever's called to be healed. I know that each of these people is feeling more deeply their connection with the divine right now. I have evidence of that, and I know it to be the truth for everyone that we place in our circle. So I'm so grateful to know that the God without is the God within me. The God without is the God within every person in our circle, every person in this community, and every person on this planet. And I'm grateful for that power of community prayer and what it means to the uplifting of the people on this planet. So it's from all that gratitude that I release this prayer into the law of mind, spirit, and action. Because I know that the divine, in all of its wisdom, has already called all of this good. Any heavy lifting that needs to be done to heal whatever needs to be healed, the divine is already taken care of. So I can just know it's already done, say amen, and together we can affirm it. And so it is. I invite you to join me for our community affirmation. My life's purpose is already within me, and I am committed to its unfoldment. I am here by divine appointment to join in a community that cares for one another, to be in a place that transforms people's lives, to remember the highest truth about myself to learn spiritual tools for personal transformation, and thus to make the world a more joyful place. So this is our time for meditation. And we just let go of the involvement in the outside world, knowing that the past is past and the future isn't here yet. 
So we give ourselves time to just live in this moment right here and right now and just be with the divine. We begin by taking a moment to just center ourselves, closing our eyes if that's comfortable for you, taking a deep nourishing breath and just feeling yourself settle into that gentle rise and fall of your breath. And as you listen to the words of this meditation, allow yourself to relax and settle into some quiet time with the divine. Allow yourself to open your heart and breathe even deeper into knowing that the divine is always with you. Listen to what the divine wants you to know today about yourself and about using that infinite spiritual energy and not living out of fear. So as we breathe more deeply and truly relax into the knowing that spirit is with each of us in each and every moment, we just sing along with, you can relax now.
thought we were separate, but now you hear my voice and you can relax now. Hawkins. I'm senior minister at CSL Rogue Valley in Southern Oregon and a good friend of your Reverend Larry. This reading is an excerpt from chapter 7 of Transcending the Tendency to Close in our series book The Untethered Soul, The Journey Beyond Yourself by Michael Singer. The foundations of spiritual growth and personal awakening are very much strengthened by the findings of Western science. Science has shown us how an underlying energy field forms into atoms, which then bind together into molecules and ultimately manifest into the entire physical universe. The same is true inside of us. All that goes on inside also has its foundation in an underlying energy field. It is the movements in this field that create our mental and emotional patterns as well as our inner drives, urges, and instinctual reactions. Regardless of what you call this inner force field, chi, shakti, or spirit, it is an underlying energy that flows in particular patterns through your inner being. When looking at these patterns within yourself as well as in other living species, it's not difficult to see that the most primal energy flow is the survival instinct. During eons of evolution from the simplest of living forms to the most complex, there's always been the day-to-day -day struggle to protect oneself. In our highly evolved cooperative social structures, this survival instinct has gone through evolutionary changes. Many of us no longer lack food, water, clothing, or shelter, nor do we regularly face life-threatening physical danger. As a result, the protective energies have adapted toward defending the individual psychologically rather than physiologically. We now experience the daily need to defend our self-concepts rather than our bodies. Our major struggles end up being with our own inner fears, insecurities, and destructive behavioral patterns, and not with outside forces. This song is a perfect introduction to the message because to transcend our tendency to close off our hearts from that spiritual energy, we must learn to let go of control. So sing along as the music team sings, I release and I let go. Struggles, no 
So I want to thank our reader this week. I'm at the Center for Spiritual Living Conference. And so I had lots of choices. And I want to thank the chariot duo, Amy and Jesse, and our CSL music team for the wonderful music that they've uh, provided for us today. We're continuing on our journey through the untethered soul. And today we concentrate on chapter seven, transforming the tendency to close. So far, we've examined part one, which was about awareness consciousness. And we began our discussion last week on part two, experiencing energy. And as you heard in the reading today, we now experience the daily need to defend our self-concepts rather than our bodies. Our major struggles end up being with our own inner fears, insecurities, and destructive behavior patterns, and not with outside forces. So today, we examine how to transform our tendency to close ourselves off and thus protect ourselves from all that energy drain. First, let me give you the question for the week. What is that one choice that you can make today to release your grip on the illusion of control, to open yourself to the unknown, to trust in the wisdom of the universe, and to surrender to the divine flow of existence? One more time, what is that one choice you can make today to release your grip on the illusion of control, to open yourself to the unknown, to trust in the wisdom of the universe, and to surrender to the divine flow of existence? In this chapter, Singer invites us to let go of our need to control things. Now, I don't know about you, but that seems far from an easy task for me, even if Singer does warn us that when we control things and try to protect ourselves, we're never free. I know controlling certain aspects of my life is a very bad habit. And Singer warns us that when we do try to control things, there's no room for growth. Our goal in this series is to untether our souls from those things that hold us back from opening ourselves up to the unknown. So today we look at how to begin to challenge that part of us that tends to close off and protect ourselves and how to loosen our grip on our defenses and on our obsession over what people might think or do and how to let go of things that hinder our spiritual growth. It's time to open yourself to whatever comes next. Are you willing to just be open to thinking about that for the next few minutes? If not, you're probably turning off the video already. So I guess I'll continue speaking to the brave souls who are still listening. The truth is you don't have to follow your thoughts or your disturbed energy with your consciousness. You can choose to just observe those thoughts and energies as they come up and let them go. It's good news that your consciousness can't follow these energies unless you focus on them. Unless, like we discussed last week, we allow them to take up residence and we give them a room in our mind. Have you ever watched a two-year-old having a tantrum? That child feeds on attention. And if you just walk away, they quickly run out of steam. I know, I tried it. No, I didn't leave my granddaughter in any danger. I just walked around her and yes, she stopped her tantrum. No attention, no energy. Our negative emotions throw tantrums and we feed them when we pay attention to them. The first few weeks in this series, we focused on becoming aware of our thoughts and emotions, those that block our spirit from feeling free. And today, I want to challenge you to make a commitment to recognize when your energy changes, when something or someone threatens your self-concept. 
whenever you find yourself tensing or tightening up. Notice it. Pay attention to it happening. Singer writes, since it's not socially acceptable to run into the woods and hide like a deer, you hide inside. You withdraw, close down, and pull back behind your protective shield. What you are actually doing is closing down your energy centers. What if instead you just chose to breathe and release it? What if you remembered, as in the meditation, you can relax now? Start out by practicing letting go of the small altercations that create your angst or frustrate you. Maybe those drivers that cut you off or something that a spouse or a friend says that hits one of those buttons that you've installed in your lifetime. Singer encourages us to begin with the small things. We tend to let ourselves get bothered by the little meaningless things that happen every day. Yet, if we let go, we soon notice our inner freedom is within our grasp. The introduction to A Course in Miracles reminds us, as we learn to recognize our perpetual errors, we also learn to look past them or forgive. At the same time, we are forgiving ourselves, looking past our distorted self-concepts to the self that God created in us and as us. Now, I don't plan to focus on forgiveness today, but I do want to say that as we're moving through these chapters and taking this journey together to ourselves, forgiveness is a necessary tool when we fall short of what it was we were attempting to focus upon. And it does become easier to look past our distorted self-concepts of unworthiness or any form of not good enough and see the self that God created in and as us. It is so true that forgiving the situation or looking past whatever is bringing us angst or frustration or pain in any form is stepping fully into who God created us to be. Singer writes this, the reward for not protecting your psyche is liberation. You are free to walk through this world without a problem on your mind. You are just having fun, experiencing whatever happens next. Hey, I'm all for having fun. And if paying attention to my energies is going to bring more fun, I'm definitely signing up for that. And it's easier said than done. We have a tendency to want to protect ourselves or defend ourselves, especially around those buttons we spent years installing. And have you ever noticed how much work defending yourself is, trying to prove you're right or explain to someone that someone else trespassed against you? Trust me. I think that's why many parents often remind each other to pick their battles with their children. Singer encourages us by letting us know that there is a light at the end of this energy draining tunnel. Here's what he has to say. You will eventually get conscious enough so that the minute you see the energy start getting strange, you stop. You stop getting involved in the energy. If anything is good news, it's that statement. It certainly is encouraging to think that we eventually see the disconnect as soon as it's happening, right? And I have to admit, it's a daily practice for me to stop getting involved in the energy drains. Sigurd goes even further telling us, you have the ability to not go with any of these thoughts. You can just sit in the seat of consciousness and let go. A thought or emotion emerges, you notice it, and it passes by because you allow it to. 
This technique of freeing yourself is done with the understanding that thoughts and emotions are just objects of consciousness. Imagine what your life might look like if you noticed an ego tantrum happening and you gave it no energy. You just noticed it and moved on. What a spiritual practice that could be. And I love this next quote of Singer. The truth is, everything will be okay as soon as you are okay with everything. Reflect on those words for a minute and consider the ways in which resistance and aversion to life's experiences lead us to contract and shut down. All right, so will there really be a time when I'm okay with everything? I rather doubt it. My little judgmental self shows up now and again around others and even around myself. I can be very critical of me. I bet a lot of you can relate to that. And what Singer attempts to explain in this chapter is how draining that can be on our energy. Think about the last time you did something really well and were very pleased with the outcome. Were you not energized? Now think of the last time you felt you messed up. How did you feel then? It was an energy drain, wasn't it? So Singer reminds us, the only way to be comfortable with life's constantly changing nature is to understand it. What an invitation to embrace life in all of its complexity, recognizing that true peace arises not from control or resistance, but from surrendering to the flow of existence. Carl was a quiet man. He didn't talk much. He would always greet you with a big smile and a firm handshake. Even after living in our neighborhood for over 30 years, no one can really say they knew him very well. Before his retirement, he took the bus to work every morning. The lone sight of him walking down the street often worried us. He had a slight limp from a bullet wound received in World War II. And watching him, we worried that although he had survived World War II, he may not make it through our changing uptown neighborhood with its ever-increasing random violence and gangs and drug activity. When he saw the flyer at our local church asking for volunteers for caring for the gardens behind the minister's residence, he responded in his characteristically unassuming manner. Without failure, he just signed up. He was well into his 87th year when the very thing we had always feared finally happened. He was just finishing watering for the day when three gang members approached him. Ignoring their attempt to intimidate him, he simply asked, would you like a drink from the hose? The tallest and toughest looking guy said, yeah, sure, with a malevolent little smile. And as Carl offered the hose to him, the other two grabbed Carl's arms, throwing him down. As the hose snaked crazily over the ground, dousing everyone in its way, Carl's assassins stole his retirement watch and his wallet and then fled. Carl tried to get himself up, but he had been thrown down on his bad leg. He lay there trying to gather himself as the minister came running out to help him. And although the minister had witnessed the attack from his window, he couldn't get there fast enough to stop it. Carl, are you okay? Are you hurt? The minister kept asking as he helped Carl to his feet. Carl just pressed a hand over his brow and sighed, shaking his head. Just some punk kids. I hope they'll wise up someday. His wet clothes clung to his slight frame as he bent to pick up the hose. He adjusted the nozzle again and started to water. Confused and a little concerned, the minister asked, Carl, what are you doing? Carl's response, 
I've got to finish my watering. It's been very dry lately. Satisfying himself that Carl really was all right, the minister could only marvel. Carl was a man from a different time and place. A few weeks later, the three returned. Just as before, their threat was unchallenged. Carl again offered them a drink from his hose. This time they didn't rob him. They wrenched the hose from his hand and drenched him head to foot in the icy water. When they had finished their humiliation of him, they sauntered off down the street, throwing cat calls and curses, falling over one another, laughing at the hilarity of what they had just done. Carl just watched them. Then he turned toward the warmth-giving sun, picked up his hose, and went on with his watering. The summer was quickly fading into fall, and Carl was doing tilling when he was startled by a sudden approach of someone behind him. He stumbled and fell into some evergreen branches, and as he struggled to regain his footing, he turned to see the tall leader of his summer tormentors reaching down for him. He braced himself for the expected attack. Don't worry, old man, I'm not going to hurt you this time. The young man spoke softly, still offering his tattooed and scarred hand to Carl. As he helped Carl get up, the man pulled a crumpled bag from his pocket and handed it to Carl. What's this, Carl asked. It's your stuff, the man explained. It's your stuff back, even the money in your wallet. I don't understand, Carl said. Why would you help me now? The man shifted his feet, seeming embarrassed and ill at ease. I learned something from you, he said. I ran with that gang and hurt people like you. We picked you because you were old and we knew we could do it. Yet every time we came and did something to you, instead of yelling and fighting back, you tried to give us a drink. You didn't hate us for hating you. You kept showing love against our hate. He stopped for a moment. I couldn't sleep after we stole your stuff. So here it is back. He paused for another awkward moment, not knowing what more there was to say. That bag's my way of saying thanks for straightening me out, I guess. And with that, he walked off down the street. Carl looked at the sack in his hands and gingerly opened it. He took out his retirement watch and put it back on his wrist, opened his wallet, he checked for his wedding photo. He gazed for a moment at the young bride that still smiled back at him all those years ago. He died one day after Christmas that winter. Many people attended his funeral in spite of the weather. In particular, the minister noticed a tall young man that he didn't know sitting quietly in a distant corner of the church. The minister spoke of Carl's garden as a lesson in life. In a voice made thick with unshed tears, he said, do your best and make your garden as beautiful as you can. We will never forget Carl and his garden. The following spring, another flyer went up. It read, person needed to care for Carl's garden. The flyer went unnoticed by the busy parishioners until one day when a knock was heard at the minister's office door. Opening the door, the minister saw a pair of scarred and tattooed hands holding the flyer. I believe this is my job if you'll have me, the young man said. The minister recognized him as the same man who had returned the stolen watch and wallet to Carl. He knew that Carl's kindness had turned his man's life around. As the minister handed him the keys to the garden shed, he said, yes, go take care of Carl's garden and honor him. One day, the young man approached the new minister and told him that he couldn't care for the garden any longer. He explained with a shy and happy smile, 
my wife just had a baby boy last night and she's bringing him home on Saturday. Well, congratulations, said the minister as he was handed the garden keys. That's wonderful. What's the baby's name? Carl, he replied. I love that story because Carl surrendering to the flow of existence was a powerful lesson for everyone who knew him. Carl literally tattooed love on that young tattooed man's heart. He showed him how gentleness and compassion can shift a heart and a life. Perhaps that's what Singer was referring to when he said, you will get to a point in your growth where you understand that if you protect yourself, you will never be free. It's that simple. Just as Carl opened that young man's heart, we must find our own path of surrender, our own journey of letting go of the need to control and cling to fixed identities and outcomes. Singer describes surrender as a continuous letting go of that inner pressure to push away whatever is unpleasant and hold on to what is pleasant. Imagine the freedom that arises when we release our grip on the illusion of control and open ourselves to the unknown. For isn't control truly an illusion? If we embrace what I often say, everything is in divine order, then it seems like it would be easy to recognize trying to control things in our life is a big drain of energy. Admittedly, I'm still working on that lesson. And as we navigate life's twists and turns, we certainly can choose to cultivate the practice of surrender, trusting in the wisdom of the universe and surrendering to the divine flow of existence. Singer reminds us, you have to understand that you can't control everything. Now, I doubt that's news to anyone listening, and yet we keep trying, don't we? If we want to untether our souls, we must choose to relinquish the illusion of control and surrender to the inherent intelligence of life itself. How? As we said earlier, Singer says, begin with the small things. How about these few suggestions? Learn to breathe in those moments when you notice your buttons are being pushed. Send the driver of that car that cut you off a blessing rather than your angry thoughts. Give yourself permission to do something less than perfectly and still be happy with the outcome. Surround yourself with people who are positive and uplifting and who uplift you and up the level of optimism in your life. Volunteer and let somebody else tell you what to do. And when you notice your body feeling anxious or pressure, choose to stay calm by telling yourself you can. I encourage you to make your own list. Let's choose to engage in the practices of mindfulness and self-inquiry and surrender that foster openness and receptivity to life's unfolding. Through conscious awareness and intentional action, we can each become vessels of divine grace, flowing with the rhythm of existence and opening ourselves to the infinite possibilities that await us, including all that infinite spiritual energy. The journey of transcending the tendency to close is a sacred pilgrimage, one that unfolds with each step we take so let's take this week and allow these words of Singer to guide us towards a deeper understanding of ourselves and our place in the vast tapestry of creation.
And so in summary, how might you fully allow yourself to transcend that tendency to close? Well, remember, release control and open yourself to the unknown. Trying to control things leaves no room for growth. So begin with the small things that bother you. Trust in the wisdom of the universe. Learn to have fun experiencing whatever happens next. Stop getting involved in the energy drains. And be okay with everything that comes your way. Surrender to the divine flow of existence and be like Carl and tattoo love on people's hearts. Remember, you can't control everything. So here's your affirmation for the week. How is it I so willingly, energetically, and effortlessly release my grip on the illusion of control, open myself to the unknown, trust in the wisdom of the universe and surrender to the divine flow of existence. And your challenge this week, make a conscious choice to engage in practices which keep your heart open and foster receptivity to however life is unfolding. And find a way each day to open yourself to the infinite spiritual energy always available to you. Let's pray. We take a deep nourishing breath. We settle into that place where we know the divine lives. We settle into that place where we know that we are capable of surrender and openness. And we can allow that to continue to infuse our life with grace and peace. We carry that essence of these teachings into the tapestry of our lives this week, knowing that true liberation arises when we surrender to the flow of existence and open ourselves to the infinite possibilities that just await us, await our acceptance of them. So I am so grateful. I'm so grateful that you spent some time with us today. I'm grateful that we have gathered here together to figure out more ways of how we can untether our souls. And I'm extremely grateful that I know that the God without is the God within each of us, leading us to open our hearts fully like Carl did. So it's from that gratitude that I release these words into the law of mind, spirit, and action, knowing the truth that right where we are, God is, and God has already said yes. So knowing that the divine has said yes, and that it's already done, I can say amen, and we can affirm it together. And so it is. And one of the things that I'm very grateful for is the people that continue to support this community, that continue to mail in their donations or send them through Venmo. Ah, oh, I love this community, and I'm so, so grateful to the openness of the hearts that are a part of this community. Thank you very much. Enjoy our offertory song. In the land of your spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal, bless, and prosper. It does good work in the world and returns to me, multiplied abundantly. Of the love of your spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal, bless, and prosper. Work in the world and 
You can find all of the information for donating at our website at cslsoutheastla.org. You can use the donate button there, or you can use Zella or Venmo at 225-287-8887. You can text your amount to 1-225-320-5100, or you can mail your donation to CSL Southeast Louisiana, care of Reverend Larry Marie Heil, 445 Magnolia Wood Avenue, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, 70808. We thank you for your tithes and donations, and we appreciate the fact that you are giving gifts that are flowing out to everyone we touch. When we remember to stop ourselves from moving into negative energies, we certainly are happier. So this song perfectly wraps up our message today. Sing along with the chariot duo, Amy and Jesse, as they sing, Don't Worry, Be Happy. We always have fun popping in and singing some songs with you, so if you know this one, sing along. Next week, we continue our series on Michael Singer's The Untethered Soul, The Journey Beyond Yourself, with our first of two talks on part three, Freeing Yourself. We look at chapter eight, Let Go Now or Fall, and chapter nine, Removing Your Inner Thorn. The talk emphasizes how we tend to suffer because we define how we think things ought to be rather than going with the flow of life. 
So join us next week as we explore how to refuse to participate in any inner struggle that causes us pain. I hope to see you there. Thank you for joining us today. I invite you to like us on Facebook at Center for Spiritual Living, Southeast Louisiana. And please follow us on our YouTube channel at CSLSELA. And it's just about time to join in our community time, which is a live discussion that follows the service every Sunday at 11.45 a.m. You have a little bit of time to go get a cup of coffee or some tea and then dial into our conference line. The number is 540-792-0192. And the participation code is 475-220. We hope you'll join us. And so in closing, Disney claims to be the happiest place on earth, but we at the Center for Spiritual Living in Southeast Louisiana know that we are the most joyful. So until we meet again, may you be wrapped in the arms of love and kindness. And may you remember to release your grip on the illusion of control, to open yourself up to the unknown, to trust in the wisdom of the universe and to surrender to the divine flow of existence. For what I know is when we learn to foster within us an openness and receptivity to life's unfolding, we feel very much alive. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. My spirit is alive, alive forevermore. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. My spirit is alive. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah. My spirit is alive forevermore. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah. My spirit is alive. Yeah.